Hi everyone, I'm Kyle. I'm here in the genealogy research room of the Government and Heritage Library of North Carolina, here to learn about some basics of genealogy research. With me today is Kay, a research librarian here, who's going to tell us a little bit more about the collection. Welcome to the genealogy room. The collection in our library will support your family history genealogy research. Let's talk a little bit and have a look at some of those resources. <laughs> So Kay, does the State Library have resources only about North Carolina and the people who lived here? Oh no, the focus of our collection of course is our North Carolina ancestors and North Carolina, but our collection includes information from those colonies and states that our North Carolinians migrated from and immigrated to. We have broad collections on Virginia, South Carolina, Tennessee, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Georgia, as well as the 13 colonies. That's fascinating. So you serve people who do, who do genealogy research. Uh, what are some of the materials that might be most useful for those people? Well, our library includes how-to guides and, peri and periodicals from, from the national, state, and local levels that talk to you about best practices and how to overcome brick walls. The collection itself includes lots of published index and abstracts to the original records that your ancestors recreated. That includes tax records, wills and estate records, deeds, marriage, and birth records. Do you have some examples of some of these I could see? I certainly do. This is an example of an, in, of an abstract in the deeds of North Carolina. Land was very important to your ancestors and so were their deeds. By using this information, the dates given, the deed number, and the book number, you'd be able to go right to that deed when you go to the original records in the state archives. Great. Do you have any other examples? Well, this is an example of marriage records in North Carolina. As a genealogist, you're interested in the, in the death, marriage, and birth of your ancestors. And this is a fine example, listing alphabetically the groom, the bride, the date the marriage took place. So land, obviously, is very important in genealogy research. Why is that? What resources would you suggest I start with to research land? Well, of course, land was an enticement to convince your ancestors to leave their home country, their extended family, and a way of life they knew and come to this strange new world. It was the ownership of land that enticed them here and uh, promoted their migration to other areas of the country. We have indexes and abstracts of deeds and land grants here in our library. You can often prove several generations of a family by tracing the deeds of a single plat of land. Land passed from a father to his heirs, and their heirs, and so on. When you find a family selling their land holdings, you'll find that usually they're getting ready to migrate. But what if my ancestors didn't own land? All right. Of course, land was the goal. Land was the American dream, but not all of our ancestors owned land. Until the mid-1800s, military service was required for all our ancestors. And so very often through military pensions and service records, you can find your ancestors. Our library's collection includes both microfilm and published indexes and abstracts to military service records. We also realized until the mid-1800s that many of your ancestors had opposing points of view. These opposing points of view strong opposing views led to service on opposing sides. For example, we have an index of the Revolutionary War service records and we have the biographical sketches of loyalists in North Carolina during the American Revolution. Okay, I imagine that other states might have similar libraries, is that correct? Oh yes. Most states ha have libraries that specialize in the culture and heritage of their area. You should work through your local public library, what they have there, and the library for the state and region where your ancestor lived. Those, they have the records, they're those experts on the particular area of your ancestor. Many of these type things are now going online and available that way. Look at the county, the local municipality where your ancestor lived. Groups like that in state archives are starting to, are starting to digitize their records and put the, make this available online, for example, their early deeds. So you're telling me I have to do some homework before I visit? Oh, yes. It's most important that you do your homework before coming to a local repository. By doing your homework, you'll save a lot of on-site research time. Go into the catalog, see what resources are available that may help with your research, that may supplement your research. Search the catalog and make notes of anything you think that may be useful, and the location and availability of those resources. Look at the logistical information for the institution. 
parking, days of operation, and hours of operation, and their, their availability of services to you. Do your homework. Write, decide on your objectives. What, is your, what are your research goals when you visit an institution? The more directed your goals, the more directed your research will be and the better use you will make of your research time. When you arrive, talk to the librarian there. Tell them your research goals, and objectives for the day, your research plan. Ask for any advice they can give on other supplemental records that may help you. Thank you so much, Kay. This has been really helpful. Is there anywhere else I should see before I leave today? Oh yes, now that you have your background information, you must visit our North Carolina Office of Archives and see those original documents created by your ancestors. Great, thank you.